has minimalism become a part of this journey for you as well? Yeah, I mean, it has. That was where I started. Like reading Leo's blog mm -hmm. was the first time that I had honestly realized there were people who were choosing to live a life with less stuff, but also less, like less commitment, less overwhelm, less, um, you know, financial strain, all of the, the other things that he writes about. Uh, that was the first time I had realized that that was a thing that you could do and people were choosing it. And not only were they choosing it, but they were saying that life was better because they had less. They had more because they had less. Uh, and so that was that was the first thing I did. I, I mean, Leah writes about a lot, mindfulness and health and relationships. And I couldn't deal with any of that at the time. My mental health was dreadful. but I So I could declutter, though. And that was where the whole process started for me. I started by decluttering our house over a period of a year. And um, then I really dove headfirst into minimalism. Um, and I appreciate it so much as a community of people who are trying to live in alignment with what's important because that's what it's about. You know, I know it's become diluted and it's become this, like it's really interesting to me to see minimalism as a lifestyle versus minimalism as an aesthetic and how marketers are like, well, now we can sell stuff to minimalists. Yeah, a new um, standard that's unreachable. Right, exactly. A new set of Joneses. You know, I stopped trying to keep up with the Joneses down the street and found myself falling into the trap of thinking, well, what does minim what should minimalism look like? So I love the movement of minimalism at its core, what it's really about. It's just frustrating for me to see people adopt minimalism and then try and like grasp for the new standard. Yep. Um, yeah. If it's not Scandinavian design, right. like get it out of here. Exactly. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I realized that when I was, I decluttered and I became very good at decluttering, but then I was also becoming very adept at recluttering <laughs> with newer stuff or shinier uh -huh. things or more Scandinavian design. I'm like that's not that that didn't make me happy. Mm -hmm. It was a space that I created for other stuff, like other other energies, other ways of spending my time that made me happy. I'm yeah. so glad you said that. Right. I just I'm so glad because it, it does seem like this can just become a new thing. Right. It just becomes a new thing. Like, well, do I have succulents in a proper quantity? <laughs> or like just <laughs> things like this, you know? <laughs> and and to us, I mean, you just, you know, come into our home and like seeing and we're, you know, we're, we're pretty low key. And right. the, the thing is we've, in terms of the, the scale of minimalism, uh, we are probably pretty in the middle. Um, but it's because we've done a lot of decluttering and found ways that, that really work well for us. Yeah. And we're utilizing our home in ways that really work well for us. And None of the stuff we have is getting in the way of us doing anything that we set out to do. So yeah. to me, that feels like it's successful, but a lot of the time I'll get comments about things and it's like, it's not that minimal or you have more than 20 shirts or well, I have, don't have 20 shirts, but you know, you well, have good. like, yeah, right. <laughs> good thing. So I, this is a thing that I feel like minimalism shouldn't cost you money mm -hmm. that, that it, it can. Yeah. If you want to switch out for nicer things sure. that are longer lasting or you have that opportunity, but I always get caught up in this that, yeah, it's, um, it shouldn't, it shouldn't cost you money to create a look. No, exactly. Just remove some excess, create some space. Yeah. Use that space. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Was there anything that was particularly hard to let go of during that process? Yeah. I, I mean, I think I probably passed through the house three or four times. And it was interesting to watch the evolution of stuff and my relationship to it. So I started out thinking that I was super sentimental and I had all these boxes of stuff, things from when the kids were babies, things from when I was running that business that I had closed down not long before, um, things from high school, you know, all this stuff. And first pass through of the house, that was like, I was never touching that. That is my, you know, there's my identity right there. Second pass through, I'm like, well, I'm not ready to get rid of it yet, but that doesn't mean quite as much as it used to. And by the time I go back to it the third or fourth time, it's evolved from important stuff to clutter. Uh, so I think the initial struggle was with sentimental items, which I think, again, is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just took time for me to realize that I wasn't missing anything that I had decluttered. That was a big realization. I couldn't remember most of it. Same. Let alone yeah. miss any of it. 
uh, and that it was it felt safe. And not only did it feel safe to let go, but it also feels great to let go. And that was what motivated me, creating that space. And then what can I do with that space that I'm freeing up? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will say that sentimental stuff was tough initially, but it has gradually become less tough, mm-hmm. which is always my advice for people with sentimental clutter is give it time. Yeah, I mean, if, if that feels like a painful experience, then do something else. You know, it's not I don't want decluttering to become a stick that people beat themselves up with either. It's a it's a meant to make you feel lighter and freer, not terrified. Yeah. You don't want to start with the hard stuff, especially no. working with a partner on these things. Yeah. It's like the the thing that one person is like, no, never getting rid of that. I'm like, no, 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 come on. It's just, just, just put it away. Exactly. Just put it away, move on to something else. It'll kill the energy, you know? Exactly. Of uh, what well, we've been through that. And that, that was a lesson learned, not a lesson read. Right. <laughs> <You know>? right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think sometimes you need to just, you need to learn it. And I made um, the decision pretty early on to never push Ben because he wasn't really on board. Hmm. He thought that it was part of my recovery from depression. And he's like, I'm all for it if it makes you happy. But he just thought it was a phase. Hmm. So I decided pretty early on that I wasn't going to touch his stuff for that exact reason. It would just breed resentment. You know, you can't drag someone into making these changes with no. you. You can enjoy the benefits and then hope that that's an example to them. Um, but I don't think you can force someone to join you. I don't know about you guys, but I get asked a lot, how do I bring my partner along? Yes. <laughs> you can't, you know, really. Yeah. You can talk to them about it. But I've, I've found that the most helpful way of getting people to, to come along is to just do your thing and deal with your stuff and enjoy the benefits of having mm-hmm. less. And they'll see it and go, well, that seems kind of, you know, positive. That seems appealing. And then you'll come home one day and your husband's cleaning out his wardrobe, for example. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say uh, I do. We do get that because that is a very common thing as opposites, I think, tend to attract yes. in relationships and that drives different personality types right. around these things. But uh, yeah, I, I around the same theme, I generally say, do what you can to be living proof. Yep. Just be living proof of what's possible with this thing. And radiate that into your life and hopefully that makes some change because exactly. it is it is hard it is, it is and i also think people. the thing that people that i used to miss in that answer um was that we don't exist in a vacuum either you know our partners our kids our families they've all got different desires different needs different um things that they want to hold on to or not hold on to and relationships are compromise you know you accept them for who they are and love them for who they are regardless and I think you take some of that bitterness or that tension out of the, the entire scenario and find that people are more inclined to then flow a little more, be a bit more fluid. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because I think the world would be boring if we we're all the same. Mm-hmm.